We're going to read verses 1 through 13, and then I'm going to read verses 23 and 25. Verse 1, it says in the New Living Translation, This is what the Lord says to Cyrus, his anointed one, whose right hand he will empower. Before him, mighty kings will be paralyzed with fear. Their fortress gates will be opened, never to shut again. This is what the Lord says. It's the second time. Verse 1, it says, The Lord says to Cyrus, his anointed one, He will empower, and he will make him mighty. Thank you, Lord. He's, the Lord says, I will go before Cyrus and level the mountains, and I will smash gates of bronze and cut through bars of iron, and I will give you treasures hidden in the darkness, secret riches. I will do this so you may know why, what? That I am the Lord, the God of Israel, the one who calls you by name. He, verse 4, he says, why have I called you for this work? Why did I call you by my name when you did not know me? It is for the sake of my servant, Jacob, Israel, my chosen one, verse 5 says, I am the Lord, and there is no other God. I have equipped you for battle, though you do not know me, so all the world from east to west will know there is no other God. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Praise God. Hallelujah. I am the Lord and there is no other. In verse 7, he says, I create the light and make the darkness and I send good times. And watch this. The Lord says, I send bad times. Y'all not saying nothing this morning. I am the one who does these things. Praise God. It's one thing to say we serve a good God and he is a good God and he does good things. But here in verse 7, he says, I create the light and the opposite of light. I create the darkness. He says, I send good times. He says, I send bad times. My Lord today, why would God do that? If God is a good God, if he's a loving God, if he's a caring God, why would he send good times and bad times? Y'all not saying nothing this morning. Why is it that God let bad things happen? Y'all not saying nothing. Why is it that sometimes when we go through life, there are things we have to deal with that we do not like, that are not good, that do not feel good? The Lord says, I am the one who does these things. Verse 8 says, open up, O heavens, and pour out your righteousness let the earth open wide so salvation and righteousness can sprout up together. I, the Lord, created them. Don't you know whatever God have created, it's good. And whatever God created and whatever God allows and whatever he does, he does it and he will use it for his glory. Thank you, God. Amen. Even in difficult times when there are shootings and when there is tragedy, when there is confusion and chaos and racism and trouble in our world, the Lord says, I'm in it. Hallelujah. Y'all not saying nothing this morning. He says, I create the light and I make the darkness. Have you ever been in a place? Have you better been under somebody that you knew they wasn't right and you knew they wasn't saved and you knew they didn't mean well and you didn't understand why is it that this person is in charge? Why is it that this person has rule over me and Lord, I am saved and I love you and I honor you and I pay my money and I serve in the church and I'm good to people, but I'm the one that seemed like I'm the underdog and the people that aren't doing what's right before you, they're prospering and being elevated on my job. Lord, what are you doing? Lord, why is it when I show up on time and I do my work, amen, and somebody that don't show up on time, that don't do their work, they get the raise. They get the promotion. Lord, why is it when I studied 
that lesson and when I took that test that I did not pass and somebody else that stayed up all night when was drunk, amen, ain't studied or read nothing, have excelled and got flying colors on the test. Lord, why is that? Lord, why is it that I am doing what your word says to do, but I'm struggling? Lord, why is it that I have prayed and I have fasted and I believed your word is true and I have stood on it and I've confessed it. I've written scriptures on my wall. I've rented them in my journal. But Lord, the opposite of what I believe you for is not happening in my reality. Lord, what's happening? Verse 9 says, what sorrow awaits those who argue with their creator. Have you ever been in a position where you were questioning God and saying, God, what are you doing in my life? God, why did this happen to me? God, why did my loved ones die? God, why do these bills keep getting bigger? God, why do the tests when I go to the doctor keep coming out inconclusive? God, why is it that my blood pressure is high? Y'all not saying nothing this morning. God, why is it that I'm in credit card debt? God, why is it that I have student loans? Help me somebody this morning. God, why is it that I'm struggling to make ends meet? Verse 9 says, what sorrow awaits those who argue with their creator? Does a clay pot argue with its maker? Does the clay dispute with the ones who shaped it, saying, stop, you're doing it wrong. Don't you know that God knows what he's doing, even when it don't make sense? Don't you understand that God is in charge, even when it looked like the devil is running amok? Don't you know that God is on the throne even when it looked like God is sleeping and he's not paying attention to what's happening in our world? Don't you know that God is sovereign? And he says here, does the clay dispute with the one who shapes it? Stop. You're doing it wrong. Does the pot exclaim, how clumsy can you be, my Lord, today? Verse 10 provides another analogy. It says, how terrible would it be if the newborn baby said to its father, why was I born? Or if it said to his mother, why did you make me this way? There are some things and many things, let me just clarify that, that are outside of the boundaries of our control. That's why we have to have faith in God because God is invisible. Thank you, Lord. God, we cannot see. Sometimes, God, we cannot hear. You watch somebody to say the Lord talking to them all the time. I said this the other day. Sometimes we're saying the Lord say this, the Lord say that. Sometimes the Lord is quiet and he's not saying nothing. But you don't you know that in the silence, God is still speaking. Don't you know that when there's turmoil on your job, when there's trouble in your home, don't you know God is still living? Don't you know when things are falling apart for you? Don't you know when that clay is not being formed properly like you think it should be formed, that God is the one that has designed you and created you for such a time as this. And he wants you to understand this morning that he's sovereign and that his ability goes beyond our comprehension and our way of thinking. Later on in Isaiah, he says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. In verse 11, it says, this is what the Lord says, the Holy One of Israel and your creator. Do you question what I do for my children? Do you give orders about the works of my hands? Listen, I don't care how anointed and how appointed and how saved we are. We're not going to tell God what to do. And we're not going to tell God how to do it. I wish I had a talking back church this morning. We're not going to tell God what to do, and we're not going to tell God how to do it. Thank you, Lord. And as I talk this month about faith declarations, faith declarations is not telling God what to do. Faith declarations is having a confidence in what God has said and believing God for who he is. And understanding that what he does, amen, is his will. And what his will is, is his word. He says in verse 12 that I'm the one who made the earth. 
and created people to live on it. And with my hands, I stretched out the heavens, all the stars at my command. Don't you know at the very speaking of God's word, everything came into existence and have been established. Thank you, Lord, just because of what he said. Verse 13 here, it says, I will raise up Cyrus to fulfill my righteous purpose. I'll guide his actions and he will restore my city and free my captive people without seeking a reward. I, the Lord of heaven's armies, have spoken. I'm going to skip down to verse 22. Actually, let me go to verse 21. It says, consult together and argue your case. Get together, decide what to say. Who made these things known so long ago? What idol ever told you they would happen? Was it not I the Lord? For there was no other God but me, a righteous God and Savior. There is none but me. And let all the world look to me for salvation, for I am the Lord. There is no other. And I have sworn by my own name. I have spoken the truth. And I will never go back on my word. Every knee will bend to me and every tongue will confess allegiance to me. And the people will declare the Lord is the source of all my righteousness and strength and all who are angry with him will come to him and be ashamed don't you know today that God will fix stuff in such a way to where you can't nobody be dependent upon him but him nobody can uh, be in control of your life but him God will fix stuff in a way to where you can't do nothing but call on him God wants to be the source of all of our righteousness and all of our strength. And God is wanting to get us into a place where we declare in our allegiance is with him and nobody else. Thank you, Lord, for the many things we depend and rely upon. We need God today if we're going to make it. We need God today. We're going to make it. And I'm going to talk for a few minutes about my faith is in God. Hallelujah. Declare your faith in God. Declare your faith in God. And then we've said this, that we can make a faith declaration, but we have to be submitted to God's authority. We have to be under his covering. And then we have to come into alignment with God's purpose and his will. And don't you know that God's purpose and his will is just like it was for the prophet Jeremiah. And we can find it. He says, I want to give you a hope and a future. Jeremiah 29 and 11. Praise the Lord. He told Jeremiah also, another prophet, similar to Isaiah. He says, before you was in the womb, I knew you. Hallelujah. He says, I formed you and you have a purpose. Thank you, Lord. God has a purpose for you and his purpose for you is to establish you. To establish means to set up an organization, a system or a set of rules on a firm or permanent basis. Don't you know God have a system, amen, that's permanent, that's fixed and that's firm and he wants us to line up with it. Thank you, Lord. When the United States was founded, it was based upon a document that listed principles of freedom and independence. And we call this document the Declaration of Independence. One of those key statements from that document says we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal and they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. And these are life liberty and the pursuit of happiness that to secure these rights governments are instituted among men deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed don't you know today that God has instituted a government among us and it's called his kingdom thank you Lord don't you know God have a system and God has endowed us to endow means to give or to bequeath an income a property to what does God bequeath to us what does God give us? What does God endow us with? God gives us life. Thank you, Lord. God gives us peace. And he lets us know that we have an enemy that is doing something contrary to it. John 10 and 10, he says, the thief comes but to kill and to steal and to destroy. But I'm come that you might have life and that you have it more abundantly. Don't you know this morning, God wants you to have an experience, an abundant life. But in order to do that, your faith have to be in him. 
What does the abundant life look like? And where do we find the description of the life that's abundant, that comes from God? It's found in his word. It's found in the Bible. And it's rooted and grounded in Jesus Christ. Don't you know this morning that God made us and God gave us life. And in this life, he wants us to be free and independent from the control of sin. God wants us to be under his authority. And he wants us to live as a citizen of his kingdom which is righteous and holy and built upon love God wants us to freely come to him and not be bound by the claim of ownership of sin which leads to death so many are bound today and entrapped and caught up in a system called sin this system that produces darkness this darkness which is spiritual darkness and hides and shields the truth of God's word. Don't you understand this morning that the truth of God's word is Jesus. Jesus said, John 14 and 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one can come through the Father except through me. Hallelujah. God has a different system and his system starts with salvation. The way of salvation is by faith in Jesus Christ. This morning my faith is in God. The people of God in the Old Testament were experiencing a difficult time and for 70 years the people of God were in captivity in Babylon. My Lord today they were under the control hallelujah, of a king that was not in honor of God. But the prophets declared the word of God and kept alive the hope of one day that God would restore a place called Jerusalem. God says here in the Bible in Isaiah chapter 45, he says in verse 13, he says, I will raise up Cyrus to fulfill my righteous purpose and I will guide his actions. Cyrus was a Gentile king, but he says, I'm going to use this person that's not saved to fulfill my righteous purpose. Don't you know that God can use anybody in anything? So don't discount what you're going through right now. The very thing that you think is going to hurt you. That's meant to destroy you. That's going to be the end of you. God can use it to make the best of you. He says, I'll raise up Cyrus to fulfill my righteous purpose. Thank you, Lord. Cyrus was a powerful king of Persia. And he first appears in connection with the release of the Jewish captives taken in the Babylonian captivity from Judah. Cyrus proclaimed their return from captivity. We find that in 2 Chronicles 36 verse 22 through 23 and Ezra chapter 1 verses 1 through 4. Cyrus declared the rebuilding of the temple in Jerusalem that was prophesied by Jeremiah in Jeremiah 10 verse 10, Jeremiah 29 rather, verse 10 through 14 and we find it again in Isaiah verses 44, chapter 45 rather, verse 20 we understand that Cyrus was a wise and tolerant leader and the Old Testament describes Cyrus as chosen by God, the God of Israel, to be the deliverer of his people. God was no follower, rather Cyrus was no follower of Israel's God. And, but he described himself as the one who received all the kingdoms of the earth. But here, this person that God raised up, Cyrus declared that God commanded him to build a house at Jerusalem. We find that in 2 Chronicles 36 and 23. We find that God had declared a place of peace and prosperity for his people. But the system in which he will bring it to fruition is not the one in which they would have conjured up in their mind. Yeah. Hallelujah. No matter who's in charge of the government... No matter what legislation is passed, no matter who's sitting in a seat of authority, no matter who's in charge on your job, don't you know God is in control? Don't put your faith in man. Put your faith in God. Don't put your faith in the system that you understand, but put your trust in the system that God has set up, the one that you believe. Be sure today, women of God, men of God, that your faith is in God. 
The Lord says, be sure today that your faith is not in the world system, but your faith is in my system. Be sure today that your faith is in what I have said and not what you heard on the TV. Be sure today that your faith is not in what you have right now, but your faith is in the promises that I've declared in my word. Be sure today that your faith is not in what's going on right now in your life, but your faith is in the promises that are found in the book called the Word of God. Thank you, Jesus. He says that I'll use Cyrus. I'll use somebody that's not saved to bless my people. We've got to be careful what we've demonized. Don't you know the very thing, the very person, the very place that you demonize, God will use to bless you. Thank you, Lord. The very person that you think's not right, does not save, that's going to hell is faster than a car is driving around a racetrack. Don't you know God can use that person to work a miracle in your life? Don't you know that God, amen, is in charge? I don't care who's on your job and how they're doing stuff and how conniving they are. Don't you know that Jesus has put them in that seat? Don't you understand that God has put the president in that office? I don't care what we say he's doing that's not right. Don't you know that God is in charge today? Thank you, Jesus. I don't care what they said. I don't care what lie they've told. I don't care what agenda they have. Don't you know God's got an agenda that's higher than man's? I don't care what, amen, the bank officer have told you. You could not have. Don't you know God put that banker in that job and God have the ability to touch that banker's heart and tell that banker to grant that loan to you? Don't you know that that raise that your supervisor said you wasn't going to have? Don't you know that promotion that they said you weren't qualified for don't you understand that God put them in that office and God puts people in places and he positions people in the world even when they're not right because he's got an agenda he's got a work to do he's got an assignment listen God sees you through the crowd God sees you through the system of government God sees you through the system of sin and he says I have a higher authority and it's in my word and I've declared my word to you and I want you to know today that I can bless you even when we're in a season of uncertainty I can bless you. I can equip you. I can take you higher even when things don't make sense. I can anoint you. I can prosper you even when people are talking about you and doing things to hurt you. I can cause those things, amen, to come in the manifestation for your life that don't seem like they're good, that don't seem like they're going to work, that don't seem like they're beneficial. He says, Cyrus, I will restore and I'll guide his actions. Thank you, Lord. A king that was not a king that worshiped God. God directed his actions. Even when we think we're under the authority of evil, God have control over it. And he can guide who may not have the best intentions for you to bring victory, prosperity, and peace for your life. Come on, it's written in the word of God. Hallelujah, it's written in the word of God. He says, I'll raise up Cyrus to fulfill my righteous purpose. I'll guide his actions. He'll restore my city and he'll free my people without seeking a reward. I, the Lord of heaven's army, have spoken. What God has spoken will come to pass. Thank you, Jesus. What God has spoken will come to pass. What God have promised, God have purposed. What God have positioned, what God have allowed to be, God will use it to bring glory and honor. God will use it to work a miracle for your life. God will use it to bring you out of bondage. God will use it to free you. Doesn't care how long it's been, for 70 years. They were in bondage in Babylon. Hallelujah. But the Lord used something that was unconventional. Hallelujah. Because the Lord had spoken. If God has not spoken it, then you cannot be sure of it. And how do you know what God has spoken? You find what God has spoken 
in the word of God. You see, you can be tricked by what man say. Thank you, Lord. You ever been somewhere? I've been in the place. They promised me I was going to have a six-month review. Promised me I was going to be eligible for a 5% increase. I haven't seen it yet. It was in writing. Hallelujah. But don't you know, I've got something in writing from God. Thank you, Lord. See, man will lie to you. Man will tell you something that make you feel good and that sound good to entice you into a place, to entice you to do something. But God don't work like that. God's system is pure. God's system is good. God's system is righteous. And whatever God has spoken, it will come to pass. And if I don't hear what God is saying, if I'm not like that mother that prayed in the sanctuary and said, she heard the Lord say this and the Lord say that. Don't you know the Lord is speaking right now and it's written in the word of God. If you want to hear God speaking to you, open up your Bible. The word of God has the prescription for our problem and our circumstances. Thank you, Lord. And I like what Isaiah says here in this chapter in verse 23 and 24. The, mess, the New Living Translation says, I've sworn by my own name. I've spoken the truth and I'll never go back on my word. Every knee will bend to me and every tongue will declare allegiance to me. The people will declare the Lord is the source of my righteousness and strength and all who were angry with him will come to him and be ashamed. Isaiah says it in the message translations, I am God and there's only one God, the only one. I promise in my name, every word out of my mouth does what it says and I will never take back what I say. Everyone is going to end up kneeling before me. Everyone is going to end up saying of me, yes, salvation, our strength are in God. We serve an invisible God, but we live in a visible environment. And in this visible environment, Environment. We look for God. We ask for God's help. We pray to God. We wait in expectation. We hope for something we can't see. And because we can't see him, sometimes, whether we realize it or not, we manufacture something in our system from our, from our humanness to satisfy and pacify us for where we are. Here in the book of Isaiah, if we go earlier in the verse 44... He talks about idols. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. An issue. An idol is a representation of something, an object of worship, a false god. Idolatry is the worship of something created as opposed to the worship of the creator. Idolatry is the greatest temptation we face. The greatest temptation you face is not sex. It's not money. It's not drugs. It's not cars. It's not houses. The greatest temptation that you face as a human, as an individual, is the resistance and the propensity to make something a god that's not. To put your trust in a system of something that's not eternal. The greatest temptation we face is to place our allegiance and trust in something that we have made instead of placing our trust in the system of the one of who have created us. Thank you, Lord. The first commandment and declaration God gave his people is found in Exodus 20, verse 30, verse 3 to 5. He says, hell and heaven over God before me. Thank you, Lord. He says, don't make under me any graven image or any likeness of a thing that's in heaven or on the earth or beneath the earth or that's water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow thyself down to them nor serve them. For I am the Lord and I'm a jealous God visiting the iniquity of fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. We're in a season right now where we've manufactured things in our world. We've got homes. We've got jobs. We've got an economy. Don't you know we've got a system that has been manufactured by man and we put our trust and our faith in the wrong thing. But hear me today. The Lord says I need your faith to be in me. I don't need you to trust a man what the banker says I need you to trust what the Bible says I don't need you to be caught up on what the politician says I need you to understand what I've declared from the promises that are written in my word I don't want you to be caught up by what the man says on your job I want you to be caught up about the man that I sent called my son Jesus who I raised up a man who wasn't an unrighteous one but was a righteous one who I sent to declare a word of victory and peace and prosperity over my life 
life, but I don't want you to be fixed on that thing that is insurance for you. I don't want you to be fixed on that policy that you have called insurance. I don't want you to be fixed on that, that possession that you have. I don't want you to be fixed on that person that's in your life. I want you to be fixed and have your faith in me. I want you to have your trust in me. Some of us are wondering right now why we are in this place we're in. God says, I'm trying to put you in a predicament where you understand that there's no other God but me. <laughs> Listen, the God can't be your mama. It can't be your daddy. It can't be your grandma. It can't be your grandpa. It can't be the preacher. It can't be the missionary. It can't be the mother on the church board. Listen, your faith has to be in God. Your faith can't be in that dollar bill in your pocket. It can't be on that credit card. Your faith got to be in God. Listen, he says, I'm the God. There is none other but me. I promise in my own name and every word that comes out of my mouth, you can count on it. I'll do it. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 44 speaks of how foolish it is to trust in idols. Isaiah 44, 9 and 10 says, how foolish are those who manufacture idols to be their God. What idols have we manufactured? We've manufactured an idol. Value things that are really worthless. We place value in things that don't matter. We place value in people that don't care. We place value in systems and places of people that don't have our best intentions. But listen, your value needs to be placed on what the word of God says your treasure needs to be today not in what your possession not in your house not in your car your value shouldn't be in your bank account but your value should be in the treasure that's in your heart that's in the love that's rooted and grounded in the faithfulness and the fullness of God who created all things and spoke a word a blessing over our life listen we shouldn't put our allegiance in anything that's worthless Isaiah says they themselves are witnesses they do. They don't see and they don't know. No wonder those who worship them are put to shame. Hallelujah. Who but a fool would make his own God? An idea, an idol that cannot help him a bit. Many of us need God's help right now. And we believe in Jesus. But we've been doing all we know to do. But now we're tempted to make an idol. We're tempted to make an idol because we've been in Babylon. We've been in a Babylonian captivity. We've been in a place where we can't get free. We've been in a place where we're stagnant. We've been in a place that's not been promised. We've been in a place that doesn't feel good. We've been in a place that doesn't look good. And we're tempted now to build something that God did not say build. We're tempted now to do something that God did not say do. We're tempted now to marry somebody that God didn't say Mary let me make it real this morning we tempted to leave a job that God didn't tell us to leave listen we're tempted hallelujah to go to the casino and put a, a dollar in the slot machine because we trust that system better than we trust God's system let me talk this morning we're tempted now amen to go have sex with somebody because we frustrated hallelujah and so we'd rather just have temporary pleasure and trust in the system and wait for God to bless us and wait for God to help us listen we're building our own system we're building our own kingdom we manufactured idols what are these idols called we call the idol our job we'll show up on time we'll stay late we'll come early amen but when god need us when god call us we're not available we're absent oh i wake up this morning my back hurt i got a headache you had a headache on monday but you drove to that job listen you had a headache on tuesday and you had around a folk that was angry and had an attitude but you went in away but when things start going in our life seem like we put God on the back burner but is your faith in God is your faith in your system that you have manufactured for yourself we trusted in something that's bringing us pleasure instead of enduring the pain of the season God have us in right now don't you know God will let something good happen but God will let something bad happen but even in the bad God is good because even in the bad he told Paul my strength is made perfect in your weakness God I don't understand why I'm in this situation right now but don't you know the pain of your reality God will use it to push something out of you if your faith remains in him don't you know the pain of your reality God will use to build and to grow and develop a character within you that's called faith God can use the good and the bad to make us thank God for those days where we got to go to Disneyland and ride on the roller coaster but that's not the day that made you 
The day that made you was when you're in thick darkness. The day that made you was when you felt like you was going to lose your mind. The day that made you is when somebody was over you that wasn't treating you right and you had to trust God. The thing that made you is when somebody left you that you loved and you had to keep on going despite of the pain, despite of the grief. The thing that makes you is not the person and not the day when you got that check for $10,000 but it's the day when your account is in overdraft. Listen, the thing that makes you is not the thing that makes you feel good. It's not the thing that looks good but it's often the thing that's bad but don't you know God can get in the bad stuff because God says I made it. God says I created it too and I have the ability to fix what's broken. I have the ability to heal the broken hearted. I have the ability to do something that you can't do. Listen, to build you, to sustain you into what you want and to who I want you to be. The people who are in captivity. Some of us are going through things right now. We don't understand. Say, God, I don't see you nowhere. God, this don't make sense. God, I need your help. God, I don't know how I'm going to make it. God, do you see how I feel? God, do you see my hurt? God, do you see my pain? God, do you see my tears? God, do you see this bill? God, do you see this doctor's note? God, do you see this person? God, do you see my husband? Do you see my wife? God, do you see my kids? God, do you see what's going on in my job? God, do you see what's going on in Washington? Do you see what's going on on 23rd Street? God, do you see it? God, do you care about it? Don't you know God ain't blind. God can see. Don't you know God's not deaf? God can hear. We go through long periods sometimes where we can't see God in our situation. We go through periods where we can't hear God through the noise of life. I thank God for that season when I got saved and when I was anointed, when I used to run around the church and shout, listen, I didn't care what nobody thought. I didn't care what nobody said. But there came a time when I got into a place of reality, when I experienced hardship, where I wondered if this thing called Jesus, this thing called religion this thing called christianity is even real i prayed and waited for god to show up and god didn't show up i expected god to do something good and something bad happened the word of god says however god is in everything the good and the bad he has control over it and he'll use it to develop your faith to a point where you believe him for anything you believe him over everything. Is anybody in this morning have their faith in God? Hallelujah. Is your faith in God? Is your faith in God? Hallelujah. Have you carved an idol? Have you manufactured something that's keeping you happy? That's making you warm? That's making you feel God? Or is it a God thing? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We use faith every day. We have faith when we drive our car that when that light turns green, it's safe for us to proceed. We have faith that the person sitting at that red light is going to obey the system of that red light and not hit us. We have faith in somebody we don't know and somebody we've never met. When we drive over that bridge that, that had a structural engineer that knew what he was doing, we don't know his name. We didn't see the drawings, but we have faith, whether we think about it or not, that it's going to hold up our car or we wouldn't drive over it. We have faith today in that car that we're riding in. You don't know that mechanical engineer. You weren't there when they put it together. You don't know whether the stuff under the hood have been put together right, but you have faith that when you press that button, when you turn that key, it's going to start. And you don't even think about it. Somebody you don't know. Somebody you've never met. Thank you, Lord. We put confidence in a system that we see, that we made. Hallelujah. But don't you know that we serve a God that's invisible? that created and spoke it into existence. And he's manifesting and he's manufacturing something for you that you can trust. Thank you, Lord. He's manufacturing somebody for you that's going to help you out of your trouble. 
He's raising somebody up for you. Whether you like them or not, whether you think they deserve it or not, that's going to do something to work a blessing, to bring forth a miracle in your life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Don't put your faith in structures and objects. Don't put your faith in people you don't know. Some who saved and some who not saved. Why not have faith in the living God? A God that says, I'll supply all of your need according to your riches and glory. God is developing your faith right now, even though you can't see it, even though it don't make sense. Is your faith in God. Hallelujah. The people's faith wasn't in Cyrus. It wasn't in the king. It wasn't in that system. Listen, God says, I want to get you back to my system. Because when you get in my system, you will experience a place called peace. Hallelujah. That's what Jerusalem means, peace. It says, I'll give you a peace that passes all understanding. Some of you say, I don't have no peace right now. I'm troubled. I'm stressed. I'm frustrated. I'm angry. I'm mad. I'm tired. Hallelujah. I've been in this place too long. God says, I want you to put your faith in me. I've got a system that works. Hallelujah. But you got to work it. How do you work your faith? You stand on what the word of God says. Hallelujah. You live like God says live. Yeah. That's the key. Thank you, Jesus. You do what God says do, even when it don't make sense. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. God has a purpose, and he has a plan for your life, and it's good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Even when your reality looks bad. Jeremiah understood it. He was thrown in prison for preaching. He was threatened. But he says, I can't be quiet because it's like fire shut up in my bones. Isaiah was the same way. He said, this is what the Lord says. Thank you. Forget what the doctor says. Forget what the lawyer says. Forget what the banker says. Forget what your supervisor says. What did God say? Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. What did God say? The word of life has been spoken. I come that you have life in heaven more abundantly. Hallelujah. Put your faith in God. Hallelujah. His system works. Thank you, Lord. He says, I'll raise up Cyrus. I'll guide his actions. He'll set my people free. He'll build a place. Thank you, Lord. Called peace. He'll build a place where they can prosper. Don't you know Jesus Christ? He came. Hallelujah. He came and he's Lord. And hallelujah. He's risen from the dead. And he has all power in his hands. He's Lord of all creation. Thank you, Lord. He's God of your circumstance this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. My faith is in God. Lord, we hear your people here today. God, we've got circumstances. We've got situations. We've got problems. We've got issues. We've got difficulties. God, we've got places of captivity. God, we've got places where we've manufactured idols. We've trusted in the systems of men. God, we've trusted in what our ability was. We've trusted in the degree we got. God, we trusted it in the money we made. God, but help us put our faith and trust in you today. Thank you, Lord. Help us to do what the songwriter says. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but I'll wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. My faith is in God. My hope is in God. I declare the word of God over my life. I declare the word of God over my finances. I declare the word of God over my family. I declare the word of God over my ministry. He says, I have a plan for you to prosper you. 
Stop questioning me. Hallelujah. I made you. I formed you. You on the wheel that I've got spinning. Some of you are dizzy right now. Seem like life is spinning out of control. But the Lord says, I've got you. And I've got this. Whatever this is this morning. Whatever it is this morning. Whatever you need him to do. Wherever you need him to be. Whatever you need him to fix. Hallelujah. Put your faith and trust in him. Don't give up. Stop looking at the system. Stop looking at the man in front of you. Stop looking at the bill on your table. Stop looking at the problem in front of you. Start trusting in what the word of God says. Start living and depending on what God had promised. Hallelujah. My faith is in God this morning. My faith is in what God said. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. He says, I watch over my word to perform it. This season that we're in right now is a faith season. Hallelujah. It's a faith season. I heard somebody with the acronym, fake it till you make it. I don't believe that. Faith it. Faith it. Because you're going to make it. You don't have to pretend. This is not a game. Hallelujah. This is real. Jesus is real. Hallelujah. His word is real. And it works today. Faith your way. Faith your way through it. Thank you, Lord. Faith your way through it. God is in control of all things. Faith your way to it. Thank you, Lord. Don't give up. Don't quit. Thank you, Lord. Things are going to manifest quickly. Hallelujah. Quickly. Quickly. But you've got to stay with God. 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 Stay with God. It's not easy. It's difficult. Sometimes it don't make sense. But stay with God. Hallelujah. Don't give up on God. He's not giving up on you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. God, we praise you right now. We thank you right now. Our faith is in you. Our trust is in you. Thank you, Holy Ghost. We give you praise and glory in this place. We give you praise and glory in this place. We give you praise and glory in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Things are fixed right now. So only God can fix it. Things are positioned right now where only God can do it. Hallelujah. Your faith needs to stay in God. My faith is in God. Hallelujah. My allegiance is with God. Hallelujah. There's something going on right now. That's making me bow. It's making me submit to the authority of the invisible. Thank you, Jesus. To the authority of the one that's incomparable. Thank you, Jesus. To the one, hallelujah, that's amazing. Thank you, Jesus. To the one who holds the world in his hand. To the one. Hallelujah. Let us breathe life into existence. Thank you, Jesus. Things are fixed so that only he can fix it. My faith is in God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I want to pray with you today. If you're experiencing a hard time, if you're in a captivity place, what does that mean? I'm not where I want to be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Things don't look like I want them to look. They're not going the way I want them to go. And I need God's help today. I need God's help today. I've been in a place frustrated. I don't understand. It don't make sense. I need God to help me. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I'm tempted to manufacture an idol. I'm tempted to conjure up something. I'm tempted to just move out on my own. Instead of waiting for God, I need God to help me. Strengthen my faith. Hallelujah. The writer said, hallelujah, God will fix something. So where the Lord is, the strength. Hallelujah. He's your righteousness. He's your everything. 
Thank you, Lord. He said, the Lord is my source of my righteousness and strength. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. Is he Lord today? Is your faith in God? Is your faith in God? Hallelujah. Is your faith in God? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Is your faith in God? I want to pray with you today. Hallelujah. I've opened up this altar. I've communicated it the best way I could. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord says, depend on me. Trust in me. Lean on me. Don't put your confidence in man. Hallelujah. I have a system that works. But you've got to stay in it. You've got to be under it. Thank you, Lord. My faith is in God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. My faith is in God. My faith is in God. Hallelujah. My faith is in God. My faith is in God. I want you to stand to your feet all over the